So, now we are ready to discuss the details of multi cycle implementation of micro MIPS. That means, the details of the data path and details of the controller. Details of the data path would mean we have already identified the main data path components that is certain registers like program counter and instruction register, memory data register, the register file, memory blocks, ALU plus some uh, more registers that we identified so far. Uh, but we are in the data path, we also have this comp router components like multiplexers and uh, the enable signals uh, sorry, the multiplexers and some glue logic would be there that those kind of details we will try to get uh, right now. Uh, also, so far we have got a crude idea picture of the finite state machine that would control this data path, data path, how the data would be processed by which data path component, the direction of the data, uh, the routing of the data, which source will be used for uh, uh, on a multiplex connection signal. So, we are ready for that now. So, uh, the topic is multi cycle MMIPS, the details. Okay. So, there is an FSM whose details, not uh, all details, not very, uh, but just the main details we will try to work upon, plus the details of the data path. Okay. So, recall the FSM, the FSM we drew it as a rough, in a very natural way it evolved. Uh, there was a fetch state doing the fetch kind of sub operations related to instruction fetching from the memory and also putting the instruction into the instruction register. That is the kind of uh, activity that would happen during the fetch state of the system. So, if controller will have phase state and it will create control signals. So, that the data path would do uh, necessary uh, would uh, do necessary operations on the memory and uh, like you know a large decant instruction coming out of memory into the instruction register and so on so forth. There is more to it. After fetch in the next clock cycle every instruction would go into the decode stage. Okay. Then if it were a jump instruction after decode jumps uh, we could uh, arrange things so that the jump instruction cycle would be over and would go to the fetch state of the next instruction cycle. So, this is if during the decode we find out that it is a jump instruction then we finish the work and in the next clock cycle we would be in the uh, fetch state for the next instruction cycle. If it were not a jump instruction then every instruction would go into the every instruction cycle would be in the E x state execute that is where the ALU is involved, address computations take place, arithmetic computations take place you know and so on so forth. Now, again like uh, what next after the E x state? If it were uh, the branch instruction branch equal to let us say then we could arrange that the EX state itself computes the like you know finishes the work of the execution of the branch instruction branch if equal to because in this state it would find it would be able to check whether the two operands are equal or not and in the previous clock cycle that is in the decode stage it would have found the target address with the help of ALU again and now it would be ready to commit the whether the new target address has to be loaded in the program counter or not. So, the work of the branch equal to instruction, the instruction cycle of branch equal to uh, could be arranged to be over finished in this clock cycle, in this uh, after this state. So, we could go to the fetch state of the next uh, instruction, all right. Uh, if for other instructions, let us say if the instruction is of arithmetic type add or add immediate. Okay. In that case, uh, we do not have any role of memory. There is there are two more states, not every every instruction cycle goes through all the five states, but there is a write back state that an instruction like add or add immediate would go to after execution. This is where 
the data path uh, should be configured so that the result of the ALU would be uh, registered into appropriate register of the register file. Okay. And uh, after double write back stage, uh, this instruction or any instruction that arrives in this state would then go uh, go to the would be at the end of the instruction cycle and the next state would be the fetch state of the next instruction cycle. So, that is why this uh, arrow. Uh, for the other uh, remaining situation, if the instruction were either load or store, then the execute state would have uh, computed the, the addresses of the locations in the memory from where to load or from to which to store. Okay, that would have happened in the execute stage for instruction like load and store. But uh, now, yeah, so it would be in the in the next clock cycle. It would be in the uh, stage of doing the memory access with the help of the address that it has computed in the previous uh, state ex state. But now, if it were a store instruction. then there would not be any further work remaining. With the memory access, the store instruction uh, instruction cycle would have archived the or stored the uh, result uh, not result whatever it wanted to store that was from the one of the registers uh, that would be uh, stored into the memory location uh, whose address has been found so far is available. And then it would go it would be at the end of the instruction cycle and the next state would be the fetch state of the next instruction cycle that would be in case of the store instruction. If it were a load instruction, then after the memory access, the load instruction would have the data which is to be written back into the register file. So, it would go to this state. Okay. So, this is how uh, like a state diagram would look like for in case we are supporting only this uh, a few instructions like JMP. And unconditional jump branch equal to add, add immediate, load, store, and so on. So, in fact, uh, you know what we are limited choice of instruction that we are describing here is purely for the sake of simplicity of the presentation. The data path would be capable of uh, supporting many more instructions. The FSM can be easily modified uh, using the same templates for many more instructions. Uh, in fact, for the later uh, discussion. We will be even removing this jump instruction uh, support uh, for our toy example, toy CPU. Okay, and that can be left as an that can be considered as an exercise for you uh, to work upon. Okay, so uh, we'll not see henceforth see the jump picture in the next few uh, like you know slides or next uh, next part of the discussion for a while. Okay, so that was the. Uh, so, this is an FSM. Yes, I mean uh, you will see a slightly different version of this FSM in different textbooks or like you know even next I would be uh, describing a small variation of it for the sake of convenience or simplicity simplifying the uh, logic implementation logic. Okay. But the essence is uh, essential FSM is this. So, these are only the states. What more do we require on FSM? In fact, the main purpose of FSM from the perspective of the outside world is that uh, FSM should generate control signals based on the inputs that it receives. What are the inputs to this FSM? Uh, clock input. Uh, so, many of the transitions are being made independent of any like when the clock triggers the transition is made like you know F 2 D is a, a transition that always happens on at the a triggering edge of the clock, but D 2 E X may or may not happen depending on whether the instruction jump or not and so on. For example, other example is W B to F this will trigger at every triggering edge of the clock. It will not depend on any other input, but many other transitions you see that they depend on what the instruction the type of the instruction. So, this can be regarded as input to this F S M. What about the outputs? The output of the F S M that is the main thing, that is the main thing from the data path point of view and the CPU implementation point of view. The control signals are going to be generated by this FSM uh, to guide the data path, to control the data path 
differently in different clock cycles in different instruction sub cycles. So, that uh, those are the details which we need to work uh, work out and for that we might need to we will need we might need to I mean we might choose to simplify this state machine not by reducing the number of states uh, that would complicate a log combinational logic that one has to implement, but by you know refining the states into substates uh, so that the combinational logic that is as you know it is a heart of uh, FSM implementation the combinational logic that generates the next state as well as the combinational logic that generates the output that would be simpler and easier to kind of you know analyze or make it efficient and so on. Okay. So, uh, so, that is what we will be seeing. So, the refinement is uh, as follows. Uh, so, I call it re refined F S M. The refined F S M would have uh, F state as it is as I told you uh, we will be dropping jump out of the picture f d always this transition is always there at every triggering age provided you are in any instruction cycle that is in the phase state would go into the decode stage at the next uh, at the next triggering age of the clock. Okay, and if, uh, then we are not considering jump, but after d we will go to e x now, here we make a separation, uh, we, we go to different kind of E x states because the behavior of inside the E x execute state, how the ALU is to be configured, how the data path is to be con configured uh, would be different for different instructions. So, now we make the bifurcation here. Okay. So, if it were if the instruction were B q, then I said I create a refined version of a state E x called E x for B q. I give it arbitrary name, name is not important. So, it is clear from the what I have chosen. It is a E x state of the B u q instruction. Okay. After, uh, after this, so the instruction cycle for B q would be in F state, then D state and then E x B u q state and then it would go here. Okay. Why are, uh, I just mentioned why are we like in you know, refining the state E x into several such states is because that would make our task of describing the control output sig the control signal outputs uh, more streamlined easier easier to implement easier to describe analyze maybe. Okay. Then uh, if the from the decode state if the instruction were jump so not jump sorry add then we would go to the E x state substrate corresponding to add instruction. Most of the behavior in these states will be same or uh, much of the behavior, but there will be difference uh, which, is, which is specific to exactly which instruction. So, how the arithmetic is being done by the ALU, how the ALU is being controlled and so on. So, that is why I am going to have uh, uh, different there was nothing wrong with the previous F S N that was probably the most compact in terms of number of states, but it when you uh, when you try to minimize number of states there would be a trade off in terms of the com, uh, complicated nature of the combination logic that you would be using for generating next generating control outputs and so on. So, here that is why we have chosen this approach and several textbooks will also suggest that, but there might be something intermediate between this extreme and something else uh, in the, and the other extreme. So, uh, similarly if it were add immediate then uh, I have a state called x add i then if it were load then E x load if it were store then E x store. This is routinely I am creating states. Okay. These are these refined uh, substates of refine this is the refinement, these five states are the refinements of the original E x state. Now, from if it uh, we are in the E x 
state of the add instructions so cycle, then the next state would be write back state. I call it W B write back for add. Similarly, from here I would be in write back for add immediate. Now, if it were a store instruction or load instruction, the next states would be memory access. Memory access for load and memory access for store. In fact, it will turn out that these two states memory access for load and store are absolutely identical because what we do uh, or rather ex load and ex store would have been identical because their precisely what what is happening is not this, but the ex load and ex store which we have uh, shown separate states here they would be identical because what would be happening in this state is just simply the ALU would be configured to uh, generate the memory address which is which is the addition of the contents of the uh, source first source register that is A and the immediate uh, field of the instruction which is signed extended and multiplied by 4 or shifted left by 2 bits. So, these two states could have been uh, like merged into one that is the kind of FSA minimization that can always be attempted, but that is not the main focus of this. So, I am uh, like you know taking the easy way out just uh, so I have created uh, so far a 2, 7 and 11 states. So, then uh, most of the states are the for terminal states of the instruction cycles like after the write back of add immediate will go to the F state of the next instruction cycle. After memory access of the store where something something is going to be stored in the memory that is the end of the store instruction. So, we will be at the end of the instruction cycle. So, we go here. For the load case one more state is required that is the ok and then we will go here ok. So, there are 12 states that we have created out as a refinement of uh, that FSM, it just uh, it will mean longer uh, larger details, but slightly simpler to read out or like analyze. Yeah. So, still these are not we have to work out the details of what the control si signals would be in this uh, in this individual states, but we have got a more clearer picture of what should be happening inside each state. Otherwise, in the older FSM, what would be happening in say EX state would depend on would naturally depend on uh, whether the instruction is uh, branch equal to or the whether it is add immediate, add load store and so on so forth. So, now uh, things have been separated out. Now, let us go to data path again. So, far we have we have noticed that we could do away with uh, instead of two memory blocks, we could have just one memory block and we instead of three ALU or adders, we just you could do with only a single adder, a uh, single ALU. So, we could see some resource optimization, but there was a bit of price to pay it and that was in terms of uh, some extra registers that we required. So, that at the, uh, the results of the sub operations like fetch, decode, execute those sub op results would be archived in some registers like A register, B register, IR instruction register that is memory data register, then the uh, like uh, ALU result. So, few registers had to be brought into the picture and uh, we had more or less evolved that uh, uh, data path. Now, we just take a complete uh, show a complete picture of it here yeah. still a little abstract without details especially the names and uh, so, you do not bother about not being able to exactly see uh, the details of the wires and where they are leading to where the signals are coming from, but I will just uh, read out otherwise there will be just too much clutter if I put in too many details which are not really essential for understanding. So, let us recognize what is over here this is this must be our program counter right and uh, what is being shown as the input of program counter there is a there is a uh, signal coming in, but that signal uh, there are two possibilities either that signal comes from uh, output of the ALU 
that could go into in, that could be ready to go into to be registered into the program counter or there is something that comes from here which is also a kind of the result of ALU, but a deferred result of ALU right the ALU result which has been put in the register. So, what will be coming out of here is the ALU result of the previous clock cycle what is coming out of here is ALU result of the current clock cycle that is a difference that is a subtle difference we will realize why we need that. So, these are the interesting subtleties that uh, we we come across when we design such data paths multi cycle uh, and FSM controller and so on and so forth. So, this is our program counter I could uh, yeah I could start writing on this ok. So, now this is this clearly is the memory block right and this must be the address input of memory ok and this must be the ad, uh, the data output of memory which can go into either instruction register or the so called memory data register MDR memory data register it is not clear here, but read it as memory data register. So, this is the uh, data read from the memory. So, this is the address port and this must be the uh, like data input of memory where it could come from I am showing here that it could come from this B register only from here ok. No other there would not be any other source uh, to from where data arrives which is to be loaded into the which is to be stored into the memory. So, this must be on behalf of the memory access store sub cycle or state ok. See that the contents of B register are being brought on brought in over here at the uh, data input port of memory and uh, it will be loaded into it would be stored into the appropriate that particular appropriate memory location in the memory block. Okay. Recall what is in A and B this is A and this is B. So, in A we have the data register read from the register of the register file whose index is specified by the R s R s field of uh, instruction register ok. And uh, uh, in B register in the decode stage we would have read out the contents of the register in the register file which is which is uh, given by the index coming on this 5 bit lines at this ok that means R t and so on. So, we know A and B what the purpose was. So, yeah, we will we will uh, come to the details of individual sub cycles a few typical ones and then we will leave a couple of a few of them as exercise for you. There are just 12 states. So, we need to do this ex the exercise that we will be doing about understanding each sub cycle separately uh, at most 12 times we will do it a few times and then we'll leave the rest to you I will do it. So, far I am not yet started that, but I am just trying to help you recognize uh, what is there on this data path. So, the PC there is a memory block, there is instruction register, there is a memory data register uh, who fills it up, when, when does it get filled up? It gets filled up in the memory access state of I mean it is to be uh, like you know it is to be filled up at the end of the memory access state of load instruction ok and then this is register file all right the A and B registers this is their ALU which you can and this is the register called ALU result name is not too important it is it is something uh, maybe I should call it really ALU result deferred ok. So, this is going to store the ALU result not the, of the current ALU operation, but the of the ALU operation that happened in the previous clock cycle. So, this is a registered result of ALU of please note that I am not showing clock inputs to all these registers there will be regist clock inputs to A B this register. IR, MDR all of them are clocked registers right. So, they are registering the loading of data into the registers is happening at a triggering age of the clock provided the registers are enabled by the enable inputs ok. So, more details have to be seen plus we also identified the role of multiplexes you can see that like over here there are two possible sources to be uh, of signals to be loaded into 
program counter and depending on the the state of computation or state of instruction cycle sub instruction sub cycle appropriate with either this or this will go into it and so there must be a, a router multiplexer over here okay there must be a similarly a multiplexer over here at the address input of the memory okay here uh, when this the alu result is also a, a possible signal that can be uh, used as an address of the memory input you can recognize why when and or the contents of pc itself could be uh, sometimes used as input to the address port of the memory block when instruction has to be fetched right so there are uh, some more multiplexers like over here there is a small multiplexer here that would decide uh, what should be the index of the destination register where the data is to be written into in the write back state of any uh, those a few instruction cycles so what whether the destination uh, uh, at register address should it come from the R rd field or should come from the rt field okay so this is this line corresponds to rd the 5 bit rd field of uh, uh, instruction register and this 5 bits correspond to rt field uh, of them so the destination can sometimes be uh, provided by the rd field or sometimes can be provided by rt field again uh, you can uh, quickly think about like you know when dif these different things will happen uh, we'll come to those examples again there is a one more multiplexer over here okay so we had already evolved most of this uh, uh, previously in, uh, when we were discussing kind of get a evolve a crude picture of fsm and data path in the earlier portion of this lecture module okay uh, clear i hope now let's uh, let's try and work towards the details some more details of this data path and those details will be will make us uh, visualize where this control signals controlling the data path are arri arriving or where are they uh, like uh, arriving at in the data path for that we'll have to uh, like you know enhance the picture a bit uh, get more clear picture of the multiplexers where the multiplexers are so here in this diagram which is same as the previous diagram excepting that like over here uh, we had not shown the multiplexers explicitly say for example over here and uh, a big multiplexer over here you see that there are four possible sources to this particular second b port of alu either it directly comes from the b register or a constant four or a pair of signals you know there are four options over here there will be four to one multiplexer required over here so i have not drawn that in this abstract diagram so the next diagram will will kind of make that clearer but with bit more clutter like here same pc mem you recognize all of that uh, instruction register uh, register file rf a b alu alu result don't worry about the names so much uh, they are like you'll get used to that uh, so now you see that there is a four way multiplexer over here as i had told you about that uh, the uh, in one of the inputs to this multiplexer is uh, the directly coming from the b register other input is coming uh, feeding constant four uh, other two inputs are coming out of as you see that ir uh, instruction register and these are the 16 bit immediate fields okay we'll tell you the details about it with some bit of uh, operation on that so there are two possibilities here in one go we will not be able to it won't be uh, easy to describe why this four but as you see like different instruction cycle uh, sub cycles different states to together we uh, like you know uh, we superimpose them then we get, get this picture but individually in in pieces we'll be have will have a much cleaner uh, view of uh, the different parts of the sub, uh, of this data path okay yeah. so we'll work with such pictures next uh, yeah so uh, my in my notation uh, in my notation 
uh, this uh, oval, this, this oval, this oval, this narrow oval and so on are multiplexers. Okay. Again from I have not drawn the directions, but it is fairly clear from the context uh, of the figure uh, what the inputs are and what the outputs are. I am also not showing the control select signals on this multiplexers as well as other control signals, but uh, now the need of the control signals will become clear which control signals are to be generated uh, and asserted, deasserted in which clock cycle that will become clear. Okay. So, so let us take the example of uh, let us take this uh, again just an outline here. Okay, this uh, some, some small ins insignificant thing relatively insignificant do not worry about it. This outline uh, we just have it as a background and now we show how the data path is configured for different uh, sub cycles. Let us take the first sub cycle that is fetch which is common for all all instruction cycles, all instructions. So, what happens in fetch sub cycle? So, this is for fetch sub cycle. What happens? Which registers are involved? Which signals are uh, have some meaning in this fetch uh, sub cycle? Is the ALU involved in during fetch sub cycle? Obviously, P program counter is involved, right? Obviously, memory is involved because that is where the instruction is stored and instruction is to be brought out from there. So, clearly like you know uh, program counter will be used and the program counters value will be fed as input to address input to the memory, memory will be involved in the fetch sub cycle because memory contains both instruction as well as data. We want an appropriate instruction at location pointed to by this. Then the output of this uh, data output of this memory is uh, arrives over here and this IR instruction register is this instruction register is uh, uh, is enabled to uh, load into itself or register into itself the contents of uh, memory that are coming out over here and that would be the instruction. So, that in the next next state the, the instruction is uh, stably available here and that can be decoded analyzed for future rest of the sub cycles for that instruction cycle. Okay. What else uh, is supposed to be happening in this uh, fetch sub cycle? This there is instruction fetch, but there is a little bit more than that. In this in this sub cycle or clock cycle itself will be using the ALU to generate P C plus 4 then the tentative or tip, typical next address of the uh, to be loaded into program counter and that for that we will make use of the only ALU available. We will configure it to do a simple addition, addition of what? Addition of the program counter value which we sent and with the help of this multiplexer we will uh, route it to, to this first port of this and uh, what else what is to be added to PC 4 because the next instruction 32 bit instruction will be at, uh, at 4 uh, bytes away from the current program counter address, current instruction address that will be this 4 uh, getting routed in over here. And the output of this ALU in the same clock cycle we, we are not taking the registered value of it is to be arranged to be brought here. So, there is this role of multi this multiplexer, there is a role of this multiplexer, there is a role of this and this multiplexer involved in this fetch sub cycle. So, they have to be given appropriate this select inputs to this multiplexers, multiplexers have to be appropriately defined. So, that appropriate routing of data occurs. Do you get the point? this ALU P C plus 4 all this is required because in the fetch sub cycle we are also loading program count updating program counter with the uh, with the next uh, typical address of the next instruction P C plus 4. Okay. Of course, we know if it is a jump instruction or a branch equal to or that kind of instruction then there will be uh, 
there will be possibility of this value being overwritten uh, with appropriate value, but that is at a later time. In the phase sub cycle, this is what exactly happens. Okay. Is it clear? Okay, it's just for uh, to disambiguate between these two, we will call this ALU result and this ALU out or you might uh, use suffix like ALU result registered and ALU result or unregistered or whatever like you know. So, now uh, we will just uh, identify some of this multiplexes and give them some names, so that we can refer to them a bit more conveniently. Uh, so, there is this multiplexer which I call uh, whose which is about selecting the okay. This multiplexer will be for the purpose of selecting the source to program counter PC SRC, that is the name I give it. So, then this multiplexer I call it uh, or many textbooks will also call it IR data. So, that is how we will refer to it, means its select signal will be called IRD instruction or data. Okay, because the job of this multiplexer is to send either the address of the instruction or the address of the data that we will see later is address of the data and when will it arrive over this line over this line. Okay. So, we are giving the, this names will be used uh, as the names of the select signals on the multiplexer. There will be a 1 bit select signal, there will be a 1 bit select signal here and uh, our convention, another convention that I am adopting is that all these multiplexers, the upper one is 0 and uh, 0 port 1, port number 1, port number 0, port number 1. Here, interest more interesting port number 0, 1, 2, 3. So, this multiplexer being 4 input multiplexer would require 2 bit select signal. This is a 2 bit uh, multiplexer, 2 input multiplexer the two ports are 0 and 1. So, I am avoiding the clutter by like not putting this like you know uh, names and whatever symbols inside, but they we are having some uniform convention of like you know uh, reading out what this what these ports are like you know, upper one is 0, later ones are 1, 2, 3 whatever. So, some more multiplexers, uh, this multiplexer a big multiplexer I call it ALU, ALU SRC B. This is I regard this as the B port of the ALU and uh, what is the source to that B port uh, of ALU? It is determined by the two input or rather four input multiplexer whose select signal is going to be uh, a 2 bit select signal 1 down to 0 in very log notation 1 door colon 0 in, uh, in VHDL 1 down to 0 or whatever. Okay. So, I am not showing that those select signals they are implicit and they will be referred to by the names that I am choos choosing over here. Similarly, this will be this I will call ALU SRC A. ALU SRC A, okay, like uh, it is to be read out as the uh, the multiplexer select signal, which will decide what is the source to the A port of this ALU, whether it is something coming from PC or it is com something coming from the A register here. Do not confuse this A with A, but yes, there is a correlation. Okay. And uh, then this two uh, will come to them a bit later. Yeah, when we uh, like talk about them, there's there's something more that you see over here. This is the left shift by two bits, which we require when because uh, when doing the address arithmetic, the offset is given as a word offset, and that offset has to be uh, like you know sign extended by this block, and then left shifted by two bits so that it becomes the byte offset. Okay and uh, 32 bit byte offset, 16 bit uh, contents of IR immediate field are to be sign extended and then left shifted by 2, when it is to be interpreted as the 
as the byte offset in case of uh, in case of some uh, address calculation. Yes, so, we will we'll come to that later. So, please uh, make a note of this names that we have chosen for this multiplexers, uh, multiplexers and we just finished showing the uh, fetch sub cycle, the portion of the data path that is active what is happening. So, what we need, need to notice is that this uh, in this PCSRC will be will have value 0, because it should allow the upper uh, input to go to PC. I already should have value again 0, because that is the upper one that is going through this multiplexer at its output. Okay. What about uh, this ALU SRC B? You see that the constant 4 which is on the second port that is port number 1 of uh, input number 1 of this multiplexer that should go through to the output and hence to the B port of ALU. So, this should be this should be 0 1 or 0 in binary rather in very log notation 2 tick B 0 1 okay, that uh, in decimal it is just 1. All right. And uh, what about this? This value of the uh, ALU source A should be 0 again, because that is uh, uh, 0th input that is which is the uh, which is coming from program counter is being routed over here. So, that that is what we mean by the, the details of the control signals inside the fetch state F state of uh, the FSM controller FSM. So, inside fetch sub cycle uh, we will just document or we will make a note of where one was PC SRC. PC SRC would be set to the values 0 comment is that uh, like uh, ALU out which is P C plus 4 is to, uh, is to be loaded into is to be brought in at the input of program counter to be loaded into it. And we use the enable signal called P C enable program counter enable we assert it. Okay, so, this is the uh, program counter slightly uh, ex expanded, this is the clock and there is an enable input, this is clock, this is enable input and this enable input uh, is going to decide whether the 32 bit data that is coming at the D input, these are deep flip flops typically, are this, uh, this is coming out of that multiplexer which is controlled by P C S R C and this is a signal called P C enable. So, this is also coming out of out of the controller the controller F S M. This uh, says that we should let this area out which on which P C plus 4 is uh, computed on with that value uh, is stabilized that should all be allowed to go through and this one it should not be okay this is the select input sorry okay and this is the enable input to the the register program counter for uh, letting whether this is to be loaded uh, letting this value to be loaded into this or not so this is going to be loaded okay so but that's not all right in fetch sub cycle some more control signals are also playing a role what are those this is related to update of program counter, which is uh, a kind of auxiliary task of fetch, important but auxiliary. The main task of fetch is to get the instruction from the memory. For that, uh, there is a memory beyond that. PC.
this we have seen, but now there is a role of this multiplexer which we call I R D. So, uh, it is a job in this cycle is to root the content of P C to go as an address of the mem block. This is the address input and the, this is the data input that we do not need to bother about. We are not writing anything into the memory. On the other hand, we are reading data out from the memory and that would be there are two places where this thing information can go either IR or there is an MDR, but we will enable uh, this a register using a control signal called IR enable. Okay. This is IR. So, we will uh, assert this to uh, 1, so that uh, the contents of memory are to be loaded latched into or registered into IR. We will set this PCSRC to 0, so that area out is uh, uh, is which contains P C plus 4 is to be uh, loaded into this P C which is controlled by setting this to 1. This uh, should be to allow the this to go through as the address this should be set to 0, this should be enabled. What else? ALU that also remains exactly what is happening at the ALU, how the ALU uh, environment is to be controlled data to the part of the data path. So, recall at the ALU again we are still talking about a fetch sub cycle what is happening at the ALU. This is the A port of ALU can be called port 1, port 2, but let us call it A port B port. There is a multiplexer here there are two possibilities here where is this coming from this is coming from PC remember that and this is coming from four different sources. For example, this was coming from A register, this was coming from B register, this is from some other places, not important right now, but we have to let this pass, we have to let this pass. So, for that we have to set it to 0 and this ALU SRC B, we have to set it to 0, 1, that is 1. Okay. We already remarked on that. Right. So, that this PC and this 4 could go to ALU. We also have to configure the ALU control to say add, add function. Okay. That is auxiliary detail that you can work out and so on. So, because of which we will have P C plus 4 available at the area out and this area out uh, goes is arranged to be routed to program counter and so that it gets loaded. So, this is what is happening in different parts of the data path inside fetch sub cycle. Okay. It is not complicated, but th uh, there are uh, one has to get a clear picture of what is happening in different parts and should not miss out on something. If you miss out on one or any one of them, then the controller is not going to control the data path correctly, but it is uh, a careful analysis is always is quite easy and uh, like HDL description also allow us to kind of uh, simulate and test things and uh, debug. So, it is not any black magic or black art of doing things. Okay. So, this is uh, this completes our discussion of fetch sub cycle. Similarly, let us do one more uh, a couple of more cases. Uh, after the study of fetch sub cycle and, uh, and what happens on the data part during that, we will study nat naturally the next one that is decode sub cycle. There are 10 more states, uh, states to be considered, but we will do a few of the 3 or 4 of this and leave the rest to you. Okay. So, again this is the outline which we will start filling up, there is one small thing that is missing here. This is that left shift by 2, yeah I think hopefully now it will be in the picture. 
So, in the decode sub cycle what is happening? The instruction is being decoded that is the major thing. So, I r is going to be playing a role. This is the instruction register. Right. So, uh, and also the re register operands are being read out. So, this is the register file. So, that is also involved in this uh, Okay. So, in the decode stage the appropriate registers of this register file are going to be read out and uh, the contents of those registers are going to be stored in A and B registers. This is A and this is B. Okay. So, and uh, how is H uh, which register is chosen to output to A? that will be based on 5 bit signals coming from here which are the R s field. We will give the details later on. It is like same as the single cycle data path details. The contents of B are shows the register uh, for B is chosen by this R t field. Okay. So, this influence which register uh, is loaded into A which register contents are loaded into B R S. Uh, okay. So, this is the register uh, read, read out part of the decode sub cycle. Uh, what else must be happening? Looks like on the face of it uh, since we already have now I R uh, like in the previous clock cycle I R B I R instruction register has been uh, updated at the end of the previous, previous clock cycle. Now, we have the whole instruction over here. Some uh, most of the instructions of code and relevant control information is sent to the controller from here okay. and that is what that is these are the inputs to the FSM. Note that note now uh, input non trivial input to FSM FSM are now available in I R. Okay. Then the clock is always an input to the FSM because like you know that is on when the uh, transitions are triggered, but the non trivial inputs are uh, now available in the instruction register and that would be used in this and the future uh, states sub cycles. There is something more that we do in de decode sub cycle. For example, if it were a branch instruction or a jump instruction, we will we have the opportunity, we will see that the ALU is not being used uh, like you know for the uh, uh, like you know arithmetic operations which are part of this add instruction or, or in the ALU is also not is free because the load or store instruction would be using the ALU in the EX state that is the next clock cycle. So, right now ALU is free. So, it is a good opportunity to make use of ALU for for doing something uh, which it which can be done right now that is calculate a tentative branch uh, target address. The branch branch target address is addition of the contents of PC. The branch target address can be calculated now. Please make a note. Uh, please note that because PC has been updated to PC plus four. This is a peculiar thing about MIPS. The target address will be old original program counter plus 4 plus whatever is available specified in the immediate field of uh, the instruction register sign extended shifted left by 2 bits. So, that it looks like a word it reflects the byte address of that instruction word and then this and this. So, we have to configure this multiplexer to let this go through and configure this multiplexer as in the fetch cycle to let this go through. So, this this will be ALU SRC will be 0 and this will be 2. ALU SRC 
A will be 0 and A u S R C B will be 1 0. Okay. And, uh, and then this uh, do we feed it back immediately to this? No, we do not want to uh, now program counter because we are in the decode cycle program counter contains original uh, the instruction uh, current instructions address that was earlier there plus 4. Remember that in, in fetch cycle we updated this, but uh, now we have calculated at the output of ALU the tentative branch target address, but do we have do we bring it back here? Uh, no, we simply uh, we are because we are not going to take a decision on updating the program counter right now in this decode because it's too early. If it were a jump, jump instruction because it's unconditional, we could uh, update this right now. But now we are talking about we have left out from consideration the jump instruction. We assume that jump we are not supporting in our current exercise. So the only so the only uh, instruction which would require this branch target address to be loaded in PC is are those conditional branch like instructions, but whether to load the PC with branch target address would be decided only in the EX state when the operands are compared whether they are found to be equal to or not, whether something is found to be negative depending on the condition of the operands or arithmetic on the operands. So, since we want to defer the decision of uh, like uh, whether the branch target address is to be loaded here to the next clock cycle, what we will do is that the information about a target address that we have calculated, we will put it in the register. This is the ALU out register, ALU sorry result register, this this one will load. Okay. So, it is enable signal to this will be set asserted, so that uh, the ten branch target address is going to be stored here, that is part of the decode sub cycle. Okay. ALU is used it is not just reading out the registers pair of operands from the registers, it is not just sending the in instruction bits to the uh, controller, but also tentatively calculating the uh, calculating tentative branch target address and archiving it storing it uh, in the ALU reg result register. So, that it can be used possibly in the next clock cycle, otherwise we will just forget about it, but it is a safe place to keep it cannot be used immediately. Like in the case of PC plus 4 was used in the fetch sub cycle immediately. Okay, in the same clock cycle, the program counter was enabled to be updated. Now, there is no such uh, need. It were, it, if jump were to be handled jump instruction, then we would have seen that kind of thing, but now we do not need any enabling of PC and so on and that is why this. Yeah, so, uh, then we can uh, similarly like you know list out which uh, multiplexers are involved, which other control signals are set, set to what values. So, control signals for for decode sub cycle. Okay. So, as you see here this multiplexer, this multiplexer I have to yeah, they are involved. This multiplexers are not involved, this multiplexer is to decide which value goes it gets written into the register that is not needed right now. This uh, like enabling of this uh, register is involved. These two registers they are perpetually enabled, they are enabled all the time because uh, you know we will not really bother about what is inside them only when we like you know we need them will it will be made sure that we have some sys, like you know correct value there otherwise what is going into it this we will not be necessarily worried. So, we always let this uh, registers be all the time enabled to be loaded you, know. uh, you can verify that that is uh, safe and fine. So, we do not need additional like you know control logic, we just hardwire this enable signal to this A and B registers to be 1, but here this is we have to be more selective. So, uh, let us make a list of things, uh, control signals to ALU SRC A, that is a that is
that is ALU SRC A 0 1. We have to let P C which is now P C plus 4 you know that go through here and this other big one we have to let the constant 4 go here. So, this should be set to 0, this should be set to oh sorry no, not this right, I uh, am sorry that was in the phase sub cycle, it will be this which is uh, basically the 16 bit immediate field of instruction is sign extended to make it a 32 bit number is left shifted by 2 that is multiplied by 4 that is fed to the second input of this multiplexer and uh, so that is 2 tick b 1 0 that is equivalent to the second. So, this is being connected ok. So, A D source is 0 A L U S R C B is 2 ok and uh, A L U result that registers enable signal the flip flops enable signal is to be asserted high or 1 whatever right. Anything else? Uh, I think that is that is more or less yeah, other ones other things take the default value that is they are dis they asserted or whatever like you know I am yeah when we only when we need to start writing the Verilog code or HDL VHDL code then we will have to be uh, like you know uh, we will have to be exhaustive about all these values and so on. But uh, this is more about getting an idea how do we go about it I think uh, the picture should be fairly clear. Uh, Next, uh, uh, we will let us take a look at the execute cycle, execute sub cycle of the BEQ instruction, because this is we know something interesting will happen here. This will this is the end of the instruction cycle, this is at the end of the instruction cycle for BEQ branch if equal to instruction. So, should be interesting. Okay. So, let us now again take one uh, outline of the data path and see what is going to happen in execute sub cycle of B q ok L u is involved right. Uh, what will be happening in the branch if equal to the A and B which now hold the values of appropriate register selected by the instruction. So, A and B are involved, this values contents of A and B are compared are for equality for that we have to arrange this multiplexers to route this to the A L U ok. And A L U will maybe do subtraction or check for equality by some comparator and uh, put a status flag say 0 flag put it out 0 flag ok. It is it is an output of the ALU a status output of ALU. This will go to the controller or some other control circuitry. So, that is what will be happening in this. In more interestingly like you know we also realize that we need the the branch target address that was computed during the decode sub cycle which is the previous clock cycle. Where is that available? That is available inside the ALU result we just remarked on that right that we are using ALU in the decode clock cycle for something which could be possibly used right now and that is the case that we are at. This is ALU result register. So, what about this? This could possibly be conditionally be uh, what that should get loaded into program uh, counter P C. Okay. But it is not necessary right it would depend on whether this 0 flag says yes or not. Okay. So, depending on this 0 flag the enable input of this program counter 
is going to be asserted or not. Okay. But the point is that the multiplexers have to be configured to uh, allow the comparison of A and B, the two operands okay. and the ALU result which stores uh, stores what uh, branch target address. stores branch target address that branch target address is we have to be ready to load it into the PC in case the conditions have been found to be correct or whatever like you know uh, consist. So, this router this multiplexer also has to be configured appropriately. So, I so this multiplexer this multiplexer and this multiplexers are going to and note that ALU out is not of any interest. Okay, the status flag of ALU is of interest. This is of interest. So, this is how the portion of the data path that is which is relevant to uh, this sub cycle. So, let us start uh, like you know exercising our memory like uh, what those names which multiplexers and what are their names. Multiplexer ALU SRC A that is involved is ALU SRC B that is involved. We have to ALU controller, ALU control should say compare or subtract right subtract uh, the two operands for and if the subtraction gives you 0 then the 0 flag will be asserted and that is what we are use, using. ALU source A says that a should be allowed to go through that is the port number 1 of that multiplexer. Here it is a port number 0 of that multiplexer the you recall note this diagram this is. So, here I will be putting 0 because this is 0 and here in the select signal I will be putting 1. This, these are the uh, think of these as select signals this is basically 2 bit 0 0. 2 bits. So, this selects this particular input port to go through that is the contents of B. So, I will write here A D source B as 0 0 and this as 1. What else? Uh, P C enable and also that multiplexer before P C, P C S R C that should say 1 because uh, this is from ALU out and this is from ALU result. So, branch target address is in the ALU result. So, that is why we should select this to go through, okay. but what about PC enable that would depend on combination of uh, appropriate combination of 0 flag. Okay. It would depend on rather it will depend on 0 flag right yeah because uh, sorry I could as as well say 0 flag. If 0 flag is asserted that means, we have to kind of load this uh, branch target address which is available in ALU result into the PC. So, the logic of PC enable logic driving PC enable will be just uh, whether the ALU status says 0 flag is uh, true or not. Okay. So, this will mean some combination logic here. So, okay, are we missing anything? Uh, the execute PEQ sub cycle okay, more or less if, if something is missing do it as an exist think of it as an exercise for you to get more practice with this. I think you have got uh, most of the idea. Uh, I will just take, let us just uh, do a memory access. Memory access of store. Okay. Let us just draw the data path portion and leave the control signal exact definitions as an exercise for you. 
Okay. It's a store, it is in fact the terminal state, last state, at, it is at the end of the instruction cycle of store instructions. So, what must be happening? Of course, memory is involved. So, where does the address of the memory should come from? Where should it come from? It should come from what is happened before memory store, uh, memory access of store? It was execute stage of memory access uh, of execute stage of. Okay. So, uh, what happened before this uh, inst instruction sub cycle in store instructions uh, cycle? It would have been the execute execute uh, state sub cycle of store instruction in which the uh, effective address of the memory location would have been computed by the ALU and stored into the ALU result for future use. Right? So, ALU result would contain contains, uh, the memory address. Okay, which was computed in the EX stores subcycle, execute store subcycle. So, this is now to be used over here. Okay. So, this multiplexer called IRD is going to play a role and is going to use the select signal value as 1, so that this is allowed to go through at the address input of memory. Okay. This is the store uh, instruction. So, what also have should happen in this committing commitment phase stage of store instruction cycle is at the data input port of memory, this is the data input port of memory. At this data input port of memory, the in where should the information come from? Information should to be stored into the memory would be available in the B register. This is the B register. So, this is playing a role. Okay. Verify that uh, from the semantics of the store instruction. The RT uh, field of IR is going to indicate the register in which the, from which the data is to be taken and stored into memory location which is whose address is given by R s uh, index register and the immediate field. Okay. So, that address has been computed previously, B register has been loaded previously and that has to be used as data input over here. So, this is the B if it is not clear it is a B uh, thing. Okay. And remember that in the previous clock cycle uh, this R t specifier field of I r like you know indicated which register has to be contents of which register have to be loaded into B. So, that has already been done. Now, they are to be put into the appropriate location in the data memory, the data portion of the memory. Okay. Note that there is no role of register uh, multiplexer, there is no role of ALU here, there is no role of register file and program counter and so on. Right. So, this is the terminal a state or sub cycle of stores uh, store instruction. Similarly, just to end things, I mean there are still more, but uh, to get an idea of uh, like what happens with with register file that we are, if some interesting cases remain. Uh, which we will take them as exercises later on. So, let us uh, look at uh, EX state of of memory access or write back. Let us consider write back stage for say add instruction. So, here we assume that in the ALU result previously at the end of the previous clock cycle, the result of the addition has been st stored. All right. So, now ALU is not involved, now it is just a matter of putting this in appropriate place. 
where should this go to? This should go to this will arrive finally, at the right data right data port of the register file. So, register file is going to be involved. Okay. This multiplexer is going to be involved, because that decides what should arrive here and what it should allow is this. ALU result should be allowed to go through the 0 port of write date of this multiplexer. So, this multiplexer uh, will give it a name. So, it is we can call it mem 2 reg. This is mem 2 reg uh, multiplexer is, uh, is selected uh, with 0 input and so that this uh, ALU result is archived in the in into the register file which register is it archived into that would be decided by this input of the register file and that's why this mux will play a role and it is the rd field rd field of uh, of this instruction register so instruction register is also going to be involved in this picture Okay. So, note that this was R s which is not playing a role here, R t is also not playing a role, but R d got cluttered here. So, so again we call it D 0 1. So, maybe we can do more justice to it by drawing some the part of this separately. This is I r. R has some portions R s, R t, R d, image 8 and something else. So, this is not really proper to the scale and whatever. So, R d is uh, input to this multiplexers, R t is also input to this multiplexer, R t and R s goes separately to register file. This is source 1, this is the index of source 2, this is the index of destination. Okay. Data one that goes to A. Data read out from the register specified here that goes to B. That we are not concerned about in this case, but just having a complete picture of this. This is the data input to the register, and where which register that's decided by this. But in, in this current instruction, it's going to be. And this normally it would have uh, been from the MDR. Sorry, this is not to be worried about. The green lines are indicating our data path now. Where is this coming from? This is coming from the ALU res result. AD result. Yeah, so, I should technically sh draw this in green. So, indicating that register file is in picture of in this sub cycle, it is getting updated because of uh, this information. This is not A and B, we do not care, ALU also we do not care, but we care about the result of ALU that we obtained in the previous clock cycle, which is stored over here. Uh, instruction uh, IR is involved. MDR is not involved, A and B are not involved in this uh, so called what piece is this? This is the write back of add. Okay. Before that, the EX of add uh, execute stage of add instruction had taken place and ALU result is has the like uh, the the result of the addition operation, uh, the destination field of IR has the information about destination register and this 
this multiplexer allows this to go through this this multiplexer I call it mem 2 reg. So, mem 2 reg should be set to 0 indicating that it is a register that should go not the MDR. In some other case in fact, it will be in the load uh, right back stage of load instruction cycle it the data flow will be like this. While doing that exercise you will be able to use this we will see the use of MDR and the other value for mem 2 reg. Okay. So, this should become 0, this should be this I call it reg DS destination source, what is give it arbitrary name that should be 1 this control signal. Okay. So, that this goes through. So, this will be this together gives you some picture of a good enough picture of I guess the different sub cycles and how control signals are output by the finite state machine in this uh, in those individual clock cycles.